Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to get started with coding on Diamond Fire. The first thing that we're going to want to do um, is we're going to want to press 1 and hold the My Plots menu. And this is where you can view uh, your plots where you can code. If we right click here, you'll see it opens the Create New Plot menu. Now we're going to start by creating a basic plot. So we're just going to click on this here and you're going to see that we have been assigned a plot here. You can also tell that uh, we have all of these blocks in our inventory. These are the code blocks. This is what we will be using to code our game. Uh, so to start things off, we are going to place a player event here in the code space. You'll notice there are two areas of this plot. There's this larger area um, and there's this smaller area bounded by stone. The smaller area is the code space. That's where we put code blocks that will determine the coding logic for our game. We're going to start with this block, the player event block, um, and we use this to execute code uh, when something is done by or happens to a player. So like when a player joins the plot, when a player right clicks, or when a player dies. So to start we're going to detect uh, when a player joins. When we place the block, you'll notice we have a sign on it that says player event. If we right click on that sign, you'll see we get our categories of player events. We can hover over these. We're going to look at plot and server events because this includes joining and leaving the plots. Here, this potato here represents the player join game event. So we're going to click on that. And you can see now that the sign has updated. It says player event join. So now uh, this block will be run whenever a player joins the game. So we want to do something. Right now this won't do anything. We're detecting when a player joins, uh, but we're not actually performing any actions. So we're going to change that. We're going to use a player action block. Now this is used to perform actions on players. You can do all kinds of things. You can launch them up into the air. You can send them messages. For this one, we are going to give them items. Now I have placed this player action block right next to the stone of the player event block. The code execution here basically starts with this block and continues uh, from left to right. Uh, make sure all of these blocks are continuous. Um, these stone blocks uh, sort of serve as some connectors. You can do some fun things like shift clicking, shift right clicking, for example, if you want to insert another code block in between. And if you break a code block, the ones after it just snap right back. So we're going to right click the sign on the player action block. And we're going to see we have a lot of categories to choose from. We're going to go to item management because we want to give the player some items here. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of actions to choose from for items. Uh, we're going to go with give items. Now you can see in the description here, every code action comes with a description of what it does. And it also includes this text here for chest parameters. So you'll notice that there's a chest. I'll just click on this. You'll notice there's a chest above the block, and in this chest is where we put in additional information that is needed for actions. For example, if you wanted to send the player a message, you'd have to supply what the text is for the message that you want to send. In the case of give items, it's pretty simple. We're just going to put in the chest the items that we want to give to the player with this code block. So let's go ahead and grab a diamond, and we're just going to place that in the chest like so, and now we can test this game by running slash play, which is how we can enter the game. And you can see I have joined the game uh, and I have received a diamond. It is in my inventory. So well done. If you followed along to this point, you have created your first line of code in Diamond Fire. Uh, we're going to continue now with uh, some more coding. Before we get to that, I should mention slash play is how you enter the gameplay mode for your plot slash build lets you enter uh, building mode so you can build some things here. I'll just, I don't know, place a stone block or two, um, call it a day. Then we can go to slash code to enter the coding mode. You can also do slash dev, and that's another way of entering the coding mode. You can see we have all our code blocks back and we are ready to write some more code. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to make it so this diamond shoots fireballs. First, we need to detect when a player right clicks. So we're going to use our player event block again, and we're going to, on a new line this time, place a player event block. We're going to right click the sign, and we're going to go to click events, because this will cover right clicking. We're going to go here, we're going to see player right click event, and we're just going to select that. So now this block gets run 
every time that a player in your game right clicks. But now we want to say we don't want to launch fire every time that they right click. We want to do it only when they're holding the diamond. And so for that, we are going to use these conditional blocks, the if player block. And the if player block will um, only execute code when a certain condition is met. So we're going to place this down. And you can see this one looks a little different from everything else that we have been working with so far. We have these pistons. If you have uh, worked with any text-based coding languages before, these function uh, just like brackets in some programming languages. These basically define the beginning and end of this if statement. So any code inside the pistons is only going to happen if the if player condition is true. Code outside the brackets will be run no matter what. We're going to set this condition here. We're going to right click and we're going to look at item conditions. And under item conditions, you see that we have the is holding item condition, which checks if the player is holding an item in their hand. And you can see under chess parameters items, we can put in a number of items to check for. And if they're holding any of the items in the chest, then the condition will be true and the code inside the pistons will be run. So we're going to click on that and we are going to put again a diamond in the chest. So now if the player is holding a diamond, the code inside the pistons will be run. So now we want to launch a fireball from the diamond. This is the most exciting part here. Again, we are going to use the player action block. So we are going to put it inside the pistons and you can see uh, more space has been created. If we want to put even more actions here, we can. We're going to right click this and we're going to look at world actions here. And that is where we can find launch projectile. Now you can see the description here, very simple, launching a projectile from the player, but there are a lot of different options that we have for launching the projectile. For now though, we're not going to really use any of them. You'll notice they're all optional except for just an item that determines the projectile we're going to launch. So we're gonna click on this and in the chest, we are going to put a fire charge and this will represent a fireball here. And now if we do slash play, and we have our diamond, we right click, and you can see we are launching fireballs. And that is the basics of coding on diamond fire. If you want to return to the spawn after you are done playing a game, uh, you can do slash leave, you can also do slash spawn or simply slash s, and you'll be taken back to the lobby of the server. If you want to go back to your plot, you can right click using the my plots item again, and you can see here is the game. You have options to play, build, and code on the game. You can also uh, use the emerald here, the game menu, to find other games that other players have made on the server. And you can see there are a ton of different categories to choose from. You can look at some of the most popular games, some promoted games. You can have a list of favorites, um, and you can search for games by typing in the chat here. So you hold the game menu emerald, type the name of the game or the name of uh, whoever made the game. So you can see if I were to type uh, my name here, Jermaster, uh, and press enter, you can see that my game is one of the ones that appears as well as uh, whatever these are. So that is an introduction to coding on Diamond Fire. Hopefully this has been helpful and I hope to see you making some awesome games on the server.